evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Quarantine Question Time, hosted by myself, Swazi, and of course, My Life, My Say, is a digital space for young people to receive expert advice on coronavirus and its impact on young people. Um, my name is Swaz, like I've said, I'm just going to give the people a minute buffer or so just as we, yeah, get people to come in because we know that loads of people are tuning in from all over the world. Um, you can see the one and only Joshua Wong's with us as well. Hi, Josh. Hi, nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. You've got Mete as well from My Life I Say. Hi, Mete. <laughs> Um, so yeah, for you guys who are joining us, welcome again. Welcome to Quarantine Question Time, hosted by myself, Swazi, and My Life, My Say. This is a brand new digital space for young people to receive expert advice on coronavirus and its impact on young people. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, you are very, very, very welcome. This show takes place every Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. usually, but given the fact that we are falling in from Hong Kong right now, we've gone for 12 o'clock in the afternoon, um, and My Life my say is a great great platform to just make sure that loads of conversations are happening and so Mete it's so good to have you with us maybe just give us the spill of my life my say and how quarantine question time came about yeah um so thank you everyone for for joining us um today um so we set up uh, the quarantine question time to really make sure that young people have expert advice about the coronavirus and making sure that we're able to support you um during this pandemic we know that we're very concerned about young people's voices being forgotten. Um, when you look at the fact that, you know, we will live with the consequences of the economic downturn of the coronavirus outbreak. Um, I think it's really important that, you know, we have a voice in, in going forward. And, you know, one of the things about the coronavirus is, is that it exposed a lot of inequalities in our society, as well as amplifying them. And that's why we're very proud to be actually joined today by Joshua Wong. Um, you know, Swazi will do all the introductions, but you know, at the age of just 23, he is known to be one of the leading um, activists on the issue of pro-democracy. You know, this guy has put his own health and safety, his family safety at risk for, for fighting for such an important cause. And we're very, very, very lucky to sort of be joined by him uh, from Hong Kong. So thank you so much for, for your time, uh, Joshua. And um, I'm sure it's going to be a brilliant event. Just the one last thing I'd say is, is thank you for being understanding with the time. I know we, need to, we typically do this on Thursday in the evenings, uh, but we wanted to make sure that we accommodate um, Joshua. Um, but also just to say next week, Thursday, we'll be joined by a very special guest, uh, Secretary Chuck Hagel, former Secretary of Defense of the United States of America during Obama's uh, administration. And we'll be, he he be able to hear from him firsthand in terms of how Obama handled uh, some of the crises during his administration. So that's going to be a brilliant opportunity for you to be able to connect and ask him firsthand. But without further ado, I'm going to leave it over to, to Joshua and to Swazi uh, and hope you enjoy. Thanks, Mete. Thank you so much. He's such a guy, you know. Top guy. Um, so mind of my say, plug in. If you've got questions as well, we would love, love, love to hear from you because this, this is a conversation and it doesn't work without you guys getting involved. Um, so please follow all the hashtags, quarantine question time and at my life, my say on Twitter to be part of the conversation because we're going to be using those links to gather all your questions and throwing them into the conversation as well. Um, you'll see a chat box. And so if you can type the city that you're calling in from, it'd be so good because we're international. I'm in London, Joshua's in Hong Kong, but where are you? So type it into the chat box. We would love to know where you are and so without further ado let's kick things off this week we are joined by the one and only a globally recognized activist from hong kong joshua wong hi joshua how are you hi nice to meet you and thanks for the oh. invitation and it's really my pleasure to share some of my insights and hope to impress more people uh to care about youth activism and uh, how youngsters engage in politics yeah Amazing. We are so, so privileged to be joined by you, you know, so thank you for your time. Um, a little bio about you, really. At just 23, um, Joshua Wong is a Hong Kong activist and secretary led general of the pro-democracy party, Dem Ciso. In 2014, you made the headlines. I mean, across the world, you made the headlines um, during the Hong Kong protests, in inspiring hundreds of thousands of young people. And since then, you've been nominated for the Nobel Prize Peace Award and selected by the Times Magazine as one of the most influential influential teens in 2014. When I'm reading this, how does your mind go? Does this feel a bit mind-blowing? Uh, greater power comes with greater responsibility. As the one who has engaged in street activism since the age of 15, I've been arrested for more than eight times and been jailed for three times. And also uh, 
just continue uh, to engage in a fight uh, to call for free election. What I will always emphasize is if great city just like New York or London, they can let their resident or citizen to elect the mayor. So why can't Hong Kong? And the only reason behind is Beijing erode our basic fundamental rights. And we wish one day Hong Kongers can elect our own government. And kowtow to China should not be the only way out. Yeah. Amazing. We're going to get into all of that very, very soon. Um, and to you guys who are joining us and typing in where you're from, thank you so much. My name is Swazi. You're logged in right now to Quarantine Question Time. And I just wanted to go through some of the rules on how all of this works. Um, and so at the bottom of your screen on Zoom, you'll see a couple features. One of them is called Raise Your Hand. And throughout this event, you will have the opportunity to make your own comments or ask questions to the panelists as well. Um, and this will be conducted in a fair way to make sure everyone is heard and has the opportunity to speak so you need to indicate that by clicking the raise your hand function um, and then i'll call your name and so we can get you on the show as much as possible and um, there's also a q a function so if you prefer not to speak that's totally cool you can type in your question and we'll use that in the conversation as well um, and we also have a live polling feature we're practicing democracy in action by giving you the opportunity to vote throughout the event and this will pop up on your screen when i indicate and all you need to do is vote and so joshua every every other week we've been doing a poll and our poll this week um, is this what do you think will be the biggest impact globally as a result of COVID-19 in specific with with conversations around young people um, so there you go it should have popped up on your screen guys you've got about two minutes or so to click your vote in and um, the question is what do you think will be the biggest impact globally as a result of COVID-19 um, the options are economy job security health service food and supplies poverty, mental health, and education. So give us your vote because we will take the votes in at the end. Um, but Joshua, just wanted to throw it over to you really. Of those options, what do you think will rank as number one for young people? Uh, you mean young people in Hong Kong or young people in the global community? Let's start with Hong Kong actually. In oh, terms of great. Hong Kong, and then we'll span over globally. But in terms of Hong Kong, what do you think? Yeah, I think the context of uh, the young generation experiencing in Hong Kong is far more different than uh, those millennials or Gen X uh, live in Western world, live in Europe or live in US or etc. Uh, just have some brief uh, background provided. Uh, since last summer, more than 2 million people in Hong Kong talked to the street. In Hong Kong, such a city with only 7 million population. So the ratio is extremely high and also prove that how Hong Kongers hope to be the master of their own house. But uh, refer to your question on how the young generation was the thought or idea in Hong Kong. Um, since the protest movement started on last summer, more than 8,000 people were arrested. One third of them were students or youngsters. And uh, age from 11 is still a primary school kid to the age of 84, which is the elderly or the generation of baby boomers. So when more than 8,000 people were arrested in Hong Kong because of political movement, and the number are already even more than the number of prisoners in Hong Kong, now we are experiencing the crackdown. For example, high school students in Hong Kong being fired by live round during the protest. Uncountable canister of tear gas were fired to uh, some of the secondary school kids that are wearing uh, face masks to protest themselves from tear gas. Uh, and also rubber bullets, uh, batons, police brutality, or brush yet already become the routine or part of the daily life of youngsters in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, with around 500 high school and more than 2,000 students were arrested. So let's imagine, in every high school of your country, also have at least one or two um, students being arrested because of protests. So now uh, it's just proof that how the young generation in Hong Kong are determined to fight for their better future and hope to determine their own destiny. And they really wish their future will not be dominated by the upper class elite belief in authoritarian value. 
Great. Thank you so much for that background. It's really, really inspiring just to know the work that you're doing. Um, and to all the people who have logged in as well, I want to say hi to Catherine from Newbury and um, Andrew. Um, so yeah, get your questions in, use the Q&A feature. But that was our poll. Um, Joshua, we're going to come back to the poll at the end. And I'd love to know in terms of coronavirus, though, or COVID-19, um, we have some options up of what you think young people will be um, thinking around what will be the number one impact globally. And so we'll come back to that. Um, but yeah, just to touch on some of the things that you've shared I mean you've really become the face of Hong Kong protests you know you've become so synonymous when we talk about politics and especially the face and people are calling you the poster boy of a lot of activism that's going around in Hong Kong as well and um, you set up student activist group scholarism which changed the government so congratulations on your work there you, you've seen a lot of change come through through what you've been doing um, but like you say your, your activism and everything that you you put your heart and your soul into it comes with sacrifices whether that's being arrested, whether that's going to jail. Um, and so we don't talk about activism in a very airy, fairy sort of way. We talk about it in a hard way where, where what your actions um, can lead to is, is a suffering of your security or your health or your protection. Um, and so there's so much here to unravel. And so my first question to you really would be, what is it that drives you? What is it that you are fighting so passionately for that you believe it's worth putting your security and your life on the line? What is that thing that drives you? Uh, Hong Kong is the place I born, I live and I love. And I really hope uh, my generation uh, can be the uh, leader that facilitate Hong Kong to be a better place that allow Hong Kongers in Hong Kong decide the way of living and determine their own destiny. But uh, I think the starting point for me to engage in street activism at the age of 15, which is already eight years ago, is because I always remind myself, uh, be the change we want to see. Always we might assume that youngster might not able to make change. If you need to make change, you should uh, enter university, graduate from those uh, Ivy League school, or be a professional, enter the government, etc., etc., and you can be the one enter the elite circle and make some progress or reform inside the institution. But I think what I try to do since age of fifteen, I hope really wish to encourage more young journey, young generation of students, be the change we want to see, and action speak louder than words. Instead of wait until graduate from school, we can make some differences step by step from our daily life. For example, uh, now, of course, I'm engaging in the fight to call for free election and uh, democracy and hope uh, we can uh, not be cracked down by the authoritarian Beijing regime. But eight years ago, I'm just the one care about the school curriculum in high school that about brainwashing propaganda. So start to care about social issues that matter with your daily life and encourage more of your peers and friends to know that politics or social issue also matter for the new generation. Yeah, amazing. And, and, and you know, when we think about activism and, and big, big change, a lot of the time, young people are on the front line. And so does it surprise you to be leading rallies where, you know, you've put rallies together of 100,000 people um, coming to join you in these matters? So does it shock you that young people are still throughout history, even today in 2020 or in your um, time from 15, even to now, that young people have been with you? Do you think there's something special about young people leading the fight? Um, for lots of uh, adults or professionals, they might have more hesitation or consideration, no matter uh, family, economic burden, or etc. Or they might need to follow some of the social norms, traditional custom, or etc. But always, we recognize that how students they will be more brave and more ready to let those adults to know that hey, the world should not work like this, and our society should have another alternative and should provide a brighter future for the young generation. And when those politicians always, they try to talk about uh, how they provide uh, some care to the next generation, I think it's time for the next generation to be the spokesperson for their own generation and era. Yeah, 
Thank you, Joshua. Thank you. It's so inspiring. Guys, you guys who have logged in, you've got Amy from Manchester. Hi to Amy and Marie as well. Um, and Marie says to you, Joshua, I applaud you for your determination and bravery and completely support you. You've got support coming in left, right and centre. Um, we're taking in calls now. So if you've got questions, jump in. We would love to hear from you. I believe we've got Venetia on the line who wants to join the conversation and has a, has a question ready. Hi, Venetia. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear Hello. you perfectly. Hi, it's so um, lovely hearing you speak. Thank you so much for inspiring so many across the world, Joshua. Um, my first question is, how optimistic do you remain that change can be brought about in Hong Kong and that young people can play a key role in that? Um, I, yeah, this is a really good question. Uh, of course, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. And with the victory that I enjoyed in 2012, when Beijing tried to introduce the brainwashing school policy to Hong Kong, more than 100,000 people, including high school students, parents, teachers, etc., we surrounded the government headquarters, which forced the government compromise and completely withdraw the brainwashing policy. And on 2019, with more than 2 million people talked to the street, uh, how we confront the rubber bullet, tear gas, and pepper spray, and the batons, we forced President Xi Jinping withdraw the controversial extradition bill, which is the largest compromise Xi Jinping have made in Hong Kong history. But if you ask how I'm optimistic or not, frankly speaking, we are aware that we are facing the largest authoritarian regime in the world, and it's also the second largest superpower in the global community. No matter the outbreak of COVID-19, we observe how China manipulate on WHO, or in foreign policy, how Beijing aggressively export its authoritarian ideology that never respect on liberal value or international order. But Hong Kong is the city stand on the forefront to confront the authoritarian crackdown and hope to encourage more people in the civil society to know that even the influence of China gradually increased in the previous few years. Kowtow to China or, pe or to be the Beijing loyalist should not be the way out for the free com uh, the global community. Yeah. Thank you, Joshua. And thank you, Venetia, for your question as well. Um, just to follow up on that, actually, Joshua, you visited the United States Congress last year to um, introduce the Hong Kong Human Rights and the Democracy Act as well. So talk us through the international support you're receiving and is there more to be done? Um, supporting Hong Kong should not be the matter of left or right. It should be the matter of right or wrong. And that's the reason no matter travel to uh, Washington, travel to London, to Berlin, to, uh, it, uh, to Rome, or etc. We always hope to seek for bipartisan support. And uh, of course, it will be a remarkable and significant uh, achievement uh, for passing the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act, which encouraged the Western world to realize that their foreign policy to China must not override human rights principle by economic interest or the trade uh, interests. Of course, it might be the first step, but also let the global community to reconsider we have lost of alternative and economic interests should not be the only factor that override all of the value that we cherish. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much for these questions coming in as well. I uh, want to shout out as well someone who's logged in. Uh, Mark Jones, he says, older people may have health issues that younger people do not have. However, we've done our part in our younger years. Thank you very much, um, very much to Mark Jones. We've also got Daniel calling in. Daniel may have a question for you, Joshua, I believe. Um, Daniel, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And where are you calling in from, Daniel? Uh, I'm near Brighton, so also in the UK with you. <laughs> amazing, um, amazing. Brian, let's, let us know your question. Sure. Uh, so obviously uh, quite a lot of the people listening in are probably from the UK. Um, and I wanted to ask Joshua what he thought about uh, the UK government's reaction to the height of the crisis last summer. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. And whether you thought that the UK government getting more involved and speaking out more would have been helpful, or if you just think it would have been a bit of an overhang of colonialism and the uh, historic uh, past that the UK has had with Hong Kong. Thanks. Um, right. Thank you, yeah. Daniel. So uh, the weapon and the equipment used by Hong Kong riot police crack down on protests are not made in Hong Kong. Those rubber bullet, tear gas, uh, 
or uh, the water cannon are mostly produced from US and several European country. And uh, since last July, UK is the first country uh, in the global community announced that they will stop the exportation of the weapon to Hong Kong police force until Hong Kong government accountable and responsible to reform the police uh, structure and the institution. So I think UK take the leadership role to impose the embargo and stop the exportation is a good move. And it also encouraged uh, the European Parliament to pass the resolution to urge more European countries also take reference from UK, stop uh, certain exportation and etc. But uh, I think actions speak louder than words. And I really wish that after the chaos and the discussion of Brexit, uh, UK government could really prioritize and recognize that if they need to deal with the outbreak of COVID-19 after uh, the outbreak end, we really wish that uh, for UK and other country uh, in the Western world could realize the importance to reveal its foreign policy to Hong Kong and China. And no matter, uh, take reference from the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act, it is possible to sanction uh, the um, Hong Kong government uh, officials or riot police with the abuse of power. And uh, one point I would also like to add is uh, for the superintendent or some of the commander of the protests uh, from the police force, they are British born and trained in University of UK. And later on, they just moved to Hong Kong, be one of the expats, receiving extremely high salary, serving the interests of Beijing, but they are locally born in UK. So uh, yesterday, I just have a call with uh, several MPs in the UK parliament and really wish that they could put more pressure to some of the commanders of the Hong Kong police force that suppress on the protest. And I believe some of the momentum can keep in the global community will be really matter for us to put pressure on Beijing and let Beijing realize that even they are now the second largest superpower, they can't ignore the words and the pressure of local protests in Hong Kong and also the global momentum. Yeah, and you make a really good point there about um, the support globally. But in, and, and in terms of your journey as well, you know, you're mentioning bullets, you're mentioning batons, you're mentioning um, the real, you know, the real struggle, but also the danger that can come hand in hand with activism. And so for yourself in your family, what about your parents? How do your parents feel how, about how active you are? Uh, it's lucky that my parents are quite supportive. And uh, since uh, eight years ago, when I organized the civil disobedience, uh, hunger strike, uh, protest movement, even have the clash with police, they are quite supportive. But we also know that some of the parents in Hong Kong, uh, they might be a bit conservative in the previous day. But since last summer, we have a tremendous change on the public opinion on the protest. Uh, on last November, we have a local election in Hong Kong. Even I have been barred to run for office. Uh, the government has qualified my candidacy. But more than 85% of the seats in the local election won by pro-democratic camp. So right now in Hong Kong, 85% of the councillor uh, belongs to the pro-democratic camp, which is the landslide victory that we never imagined. So we just proved that in Hong Kong, such a place with almost lowest birth rate in the global community, not only youngster, Gen X or millennials, even for the generation of my parents, baby boomers, they stand belongs to the silent majority, but stand with the fellow protester. Yeah, wow, wow. And I think that's so true across history, isn't it? When people rise up and do the right thing and they band together, it is the community where you see strength in numbers and people coming together to do the right thing. Um, we've also got a caller on the line. Is it Katie, I think? Katie wants to call in with a question, I believe. Or Caitlin, sorry. Hi. Hi, how are you, Caitlin? Where are you calling in from? From Northwest England. Ah, oh, great to have you. What's your question? So the media plays an important role in a pandemic. What's your view on how the pandemic has been reported? Great question. Thank you, Caitlin. Yeah, so uh, on 1st of January of 2020, 
in Hong Kong, such a city with only 7 million population, we have more than 1 million people talk to the street uh, to join the rally to call for free election. Unfortunately, police still fire uh, the uh, tear gas uh, to stop the protest that originally authorized by the government, which is really insane. But during the outbreak of COVID-19, even we can't mobilize people gather on street, we still have online assembly uh, by Facebook live stream. And also we have virtual protests on the most popular Nintendo Switch game, Animal Crossing. And we just turned the island in the Animal Crossing to be a protest song and through our creativity to let Beijing know that even they ban Animal Crossing in mainland China. But Hong Kong still is kind of international city that we will through a uh, different kind of way out to keep our protest momentum. And I think even under the outbreak of COVID-19, which is difficult for us to put the global spotlight on Hong Kong, but no doubt at all, the global spotlight put on China and everyone accused and doubts that how come Beijing refused to let WHO investigate on the source of the coronavirus and yeah. just risk out in the pandemic. And during this pandemic as well, that's such a good point that you, you know, you're following your movement. Um, how is it you're using that following in terms of what's going on now, not just globally, but in terms of, of Hong Kong as well? Um, what are some of the things that you've been doing to support those most in need? Uh, I think what we try to do is out, out, under the outbreak of COVID-19, mm -hmm. uh, we still hope to let people to know that Hong Kong is never give up and we still keep on our fights in such uphill battle. And that's the reason for me to up my Twitter in English every day, hope to let the Western world uh, and more young generation around the world could understand how the fights in Hong Kong and just like how more than 8,000 people were arrested, more than 1,200 people, including me, uh, were prosecuted since last summer and yeah. hundreds of uh, youngsters were already physically locked up in prison. You can't imagine a high school student that is even younger than me need to face the jail terms for five, 10 years just because of participating in the protest. And even it might be a bit difficult uh, for me to answer all the questions uh, from the chat box because uh, I can't type at the same time when I answer the question. So uh, I apologize that I can't answer all the questions. But I think how we keep on uh, hope to uh, have strict activism after the, uh, uh, after, the, uh, after the outbreak of COVID-19 on June or July, and also on the upcoming election uh, on September, which is the legislative council election in Hong Kong, similar to the parliament election in UK, we hope to let the pro-democratic camp take the majority. At the same time, international efficacy also matter because um, I know some of the uh, UK lawyer solicitors and some of the human rights activists in UK, they are considering to hold and to raise the pro private prosecution to prosecute the UK bond police in UK if we can't prosecute them in Hong Kong. So how to keep the momentum in the local FO through the election and international, which is also important. Amazing. Thank you, Joshua. We just had a question come in as well. Um, someone anonymous, but in the chat box as well. So do, yeah, and I completely understand. We can't get through all the questions, but we will take as many as possible. Um, it says, hi, Josh. I'm a huge, huge fan of you and China Uncensored. And I want to ask, how will you mobilize the rest of the world to your cause, especially how you will get Chinese people on side? Um, but also to this question, I wanted to add, what does it look like if there were three steps on how to mobilize people for a cause, as, you know, especially in terms of what you're, what you're protesting for, how do you radicalize people, not radicalize, how do you galvanize people to do that? Um, and what are some of the steps practically on to bringing people together? Because the numbers you've brought together are huge. So how do you do that safely, but also um, in unity so people are doing the right thing together? Um, traditional media will always be the platform serving the interests of the existing uh, leader in the society or beneficial to the one belongs to the elite circle. So how to break through the traditional media barrier and uh, social media is the important platform for any activist or human rights defender to start the first step. And later on, how to let the, your friends or peers that uh, belongs to the same generation as you through some of the daily example uh, to let them know that how that specific social issue matters for their future or matter for their daily life.
that's also another critical uh, criteria. And finally, how to call for action. I think, of course, it will be important to provide some of the concrete way or option for them to engage in. Uh, for some of the youngsters, if you ask them first time, they need to join into the protest uh, on the street immediately. They may have some of the hesitation, consideration, etc. But if it's just some of the online petition following some of the Twitter, we tweet some of the threads, or etc. Uh, provide some of the concrete, easy, rich target or goal for your friends to join into the campaign, which is also uh, important. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Joshua, because I think, you know, um, you know, I look at someone like Martin Luther King Jr. who did very much similar to what you and reaped the consequences of it as well, you know, were jailed and had so many people you had to look out for. And I think when you give people the, the outline of what it is they're signing up for, that's wise and that's good because people aren't just going in blind, you know, they're really understanding the cause, but also the sacrifice that comes with that as well. Um, I think we've got Mete on the line as well, who wants to jump in and ask a question. Always good to have him asking questions. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Joshua. I guess um, I wanted to sort of abuse my sort of uh, power as the as the host. Um, so my question to you would be: I mean, of course, you've been sort of in this in this world now for a good nearly nearly a decade. And looking back over the last you know ten years, what would you have done differently, or what would you advise a young Joshua Wong who was fifteen? Uh, when we engage in social movement, we can't hold the crystal ball to predict the future or uh, just ask for the next step uh, by any kind of uh, prediction. But what we can try to do is uh, never regret and continue to improve ourselves and continue to fight not uh, by ourselves, but also with our teammates. So how to gather our team and to maximize the influence and to encourage more people not to be your enemy to be the allies, which is really critical. And uh, 10 years ago, it's still not Xi Jinping be the leader to rule China and Hong Kong. But right now, under his hotline authoritarian crackdown, uh, which is difficult for us to guarantee or expect how many years will still Xi Jinping be the president of China. But at least all we know that uh, two, three or four decades later, uh, at least I'm still alive. But for Xi Jinping, um, yeah, no one can guarantee. So how to be the next generation uh, to take the leadership role? And as I've mentioned first in this sharing section, greater power come with greater responsibility. And uh, social movement might be the process turning something impossible to be possible. So uh, when this kind of process of self-actualization, never regret find more allies and we can make change from a first step. Yeah, so here is my sum up. Amazing, thank you, thank you. And I suppose just to round it up and um, yeah, you've spoken so much about what drives you and the passion that you have and the change you want to see. Um, and I just wanna know, what is it that anchors you? Is it maybe a faith or a belief or something you hold on to that someone's told you that, that keeps you headstrong, regardless if you're having a day of change and seeing a day of victory and success, or you're in a jail cell and you've been arrested and things look bleak. On both sides of the coin, what is it that, that grounds you to keep you fighting for change? Is it a belief or a faith or, yeah, what is it that holds you and keeps you strong? Uh, I think that's the sense of belongings as a Hong Konger and the belief on democracy. And compared to the price paid by some of my fellow uh, friends uh, engage in street activism, uh, 16 years old high school girl, uh, after joined the protest, result in being gang raped by a riot police in police station. Uh, pregnant woman uh, being tortured uh, with batons and pepper spray by riot police without any legitimate reason. Or how a high school student uh, being sent to a hospital because of being fired by a live round uh, during the clash. Uh, as the one who have been just being jailed for around uh, 120 days, the price I pay is just a small piece of cake, but their pain is my pain. And how to move forward and let people know that we never give up, which is really important. Yeah, 
amazing words thank you and and that sense of justice and standing with other people yeah i completely hear that um joshua you're such an inspiration you know at such a young age and someone who even for me is young you know you're leading the way by example and with such wisdom as well it's a it's an honor um we we had the poll at the beginning of the show if you've just logged in welcome and um, this is quarantine question time and the results are in our question was what do you think will be the biggest impact globally as a result of covid19 um, and 56% of people um, across, and this isn't just London-based, this is, this is globally as well, says the economy. Um, Joshua, is that something that, that you empathise with or, or shocks you, 56% saying the economy? Um, I think economy, of course, is the biggest impact right now. But I think after the outbreak of COVID-19, I hope um, it could end a uh, few months later. Uh, how will be the Western world uh, reassess the approach to China. I think that might be one of the possible uh, and a possible factor that might be prioritized a uh, half year later. And we really wish that uh, the COVID-19, the pandemic could end as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, we really pray so. Um, and so we're wrapping up now, but I thought any words of advice, maybe one top tip for anyone who's watching, a young person who has activism burning inside of them, um, wants to challenge the wrong and see justice. If you've got one tip that you could share with them, I wonder what it would be. Make change from the first step and never hesitate to enhance any campaign because social policy or what's happened in the society matter to the young generation daily life and also matter for our future yeah amazing words thank, thank you, you so much um meta is back i wondered if meta has any closing words as well no just really to to thank you josh i think it's been breathtaking for all of us really hearing about what those personal experiences have been for you um i know i've been in touch with you before about bringing you to the common futures forum obviously it couldn't happen last year because we had the hong kong elections and you had yeah. just come out of, 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 of prison as well. Um, but, you know, like as soon as hopefully life goes back to, to normal, we hope very soon and we can. We'd love to bring you to London for young people from the UK to actually meet you and sort of hear about your inspiring story as well. So keep up the great work and thank you so much for your time today. OK, thank you. And it's time for me to join another meeting. OK, bye bye. bye. And uh, finally, uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter ID is Joshua Wong CF. J O S H U A W O N G C F. And also, it would be great if you guys would love to know more about my personal journey. Uh, purchase my book, Unfree Speech, in some of the bookstores in UK or, per, uh, or just uh, found on my Twitter uh, biography. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Joshua. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. My name is Swazi. Um, you've got my face and Mete's face on the call right now. Um, we have partnered together to do Quarantine Question Time every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Um, and it's hosted by My Life, My Say. It's all about getting young people to the forefront of the conversation. And when it comes to questions, we love taking in as many questions as possible. Next week, we've got a very, very special VVVV VIP guest. Um, next Thursday, the 21st of May, we're going to be joined by Obama's former Secretary of Defense, Chuck Hagel. So this is going to be a huge conversation and one that we would love for you to get involved with as well. Um, so unless Mete has got any final words. I mean, just to say, look, if there's any speakers that you want us to, to reach out to, you know, whether it's from the UK or globally, or we're in a sort of a, a weird situation where we're lucky to be able to actually connect with people digitally. Yeah. Um, and the response has been overwhelming. There's been like, you know, over the last couple of weeks since lockdown, there's been thousands of young people who've engaged with our platform and we're very, very grateful uh, for all your support. So if you've got any ideas on speakers that you'd like to see, reach out to either me or Swazi uh, personally. I'm sure we'll have time to speak to you about it as well. Um, and yeah, let's make it happen. Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much for logging in, guys. We'll see you next Thursday. Take care. Bye.